Okay, here we have the developing tank. This is known as a daylight tank, meaning once you get your film loaded up on the reel inside, you can work in a lit room and pour your cams in, do your agitations, etc. Well, let's open this guy up and see what we have inside. Inside is what's known as a reel. And the reel has spirals that the film gets trapped in. And this keeps the film from touching itself and causing development problems. So to prep for loading the film, you need to take that stuff off. I highly recommend you organize your bits and pieces before you turn the lights off. And once the lights are off, you're going to load your film onto this guy. Before I start developing, I like to make sure that the ball bearings in a Patterson reel, these are the, this little mechanism kind of pulls the film through when you twist it like this. I want to make sure those ball bearings are really loose. You can hear one of them, or at least you could. So I keep a spare piece of film around, and I feed this spare piece of film into the, uh, the reel. You can see how it's moving that ball bearing around. And uh, I want to get the other ball bearing to move around. And you can even try to get it to feed. So that makes sure that there's nothing sticky going on in here. If you have a sticky ball bearing in your Patterson reel, you're going to be an unhappy camper. Once that's done, again, this is all in the dark. You put these bits and pieces back together. At this point, you're good to go, but I always put the cap back on. Once that's done, you could leave the film in there indefinitely. There's nothing but air in here, and the film's perfectly fine. It's light, tight, etc. Uh, but I'll do this first, put it aside, then I start measuring my chemicals. All right, now it's time to uh, measure our chemicals, or our chemical, which is rodenol. If you recall on my iPhone, uh, in the Massive Dev Chart app, it said, for 600 milliliters, 1 plus 25 dilution, I'm going to need 23 milliliters of rodinol. And here's my rodinol. And I'm going to use the small graduate to measure out 23 milliliters. Again, you can see that I have marked my common measurements on my small graduate. I used a permanent fine point pen to do that. So, Time to measure. There are easier ways to do this. Um, there's eyedroppers and that sort of thing. I don't have one, so I just kind of have to fake it. So I hold the bottom of the uh, graduate and I start pouring in my chemical. And you need to do it very smoothly. I'm going to call that good enough. I mean, Listen, folks, your film will get developed. Even if I missed by 10%, the film will still be developed. Okay, so now I've got my chemical measured. I need to make my development mixture. And first, let me rinse out my uh, beaker here. Just to get the dust out of it, I usually store the funnel inside of it, which keeps the dust out mostly, but you know, it's always better to uh, get rid of any dust that might be in there. I'm going to mix up 600 milliliters, and that is what this mark right here is. And again, I always mark my graduates so that it's easy to um, figure out what level of water I need to put in. Get my mixer out. I'm going to throw my rodinol in here. Rinse out my graduate. Later I'll wash that. And now I'm going to grab my distilled water. Notice I have tap water and distilled water here. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, but I do my development chemical in distilled water. 600 milliliters. Can you tell I've done this a few times? And then mix it up. And since Rodinol is a liquid developer, I mean, there's really nothing to the mixing. Rinse off my mixer, later I'll wash it. Now my chems are ready. Okay, now my film is loaded onto the reel. I've got the lights on, all is good. I like to pre-wash my film. 
why I like to do that will become clear after I pre-wash my film. So to do the pre-wash, I'm going to just put tap water at room temperature into my tank. I kind of use the sound in my eyes to figure out when I have enough. Um, because I'm filming, I kind of did things a little out of order. Normally I would use my beaker to do this. Um, but you can kind of see and tell when you've got enough. So, with this on here, I'm going to agitate it a little bit. This isn't rocket science. I'm just trying to get the water mixed around in there, make sure the film gets completely wet. What this is going to do is take off the anti-halation uh, layer on the film. Halation, halation, I don't know. Uh, and that's a dye. And I like to have my negatives really clean and I like to uh, have them come out of development that way. And I don't really like the idea of the dye swishing around in there with my developer. So I'm going to leave this here for uh, just a few minutes. There's no timing or anything like that. Just a couple, three minutes to give it time to dissolve the dye. Alright, my film's been soaking for a little while. I'm about ready to pour out my uh, wash, my initial wash. And I've got my, I've kind of got a wet side here and a dry side. The dry side is under where the camera is and my iPhone is over here. I'm going to do all my development, uh, washing, etc., etc., over here. And so let's get started on that. I'm going to pour out my wash water. Now you see why I like to wash my film. Different films have different uh, dyes on them. Doesn't really matter, just point of interest. Now I'm ready to start developing. Remember, my iPhone is here and ready to go. I'm going to start pouring in my chemical in now. You try to pour it in as quickly as possible without blood bloating. Now I'm going to start my timer. You should be able to hear that. And it's telling me to agitate. And agitate for 30 seconds. A lot of people do it for a minute. While that ticking is going on is while I should be agitating and you may recall that the the numbers are kind of bouncing on the iPhone. All right, that's the initial agitation done. Now I can rinse out my stuff and kind of get ready for my next agitation. And this is all we do. We're just going to agitate this film when the, um, when the iPhone tells us to. And when it's done, we're going to dump it out, go to the next phase, which is stop bath, uh, for which I use water. Okay, I'm coming up on my last agitation. I'm almost at six minutes, and I'm going to dump this right at 618. I've got my uh, stop water ready. This is also distilled water, and I've got my fixer prepared as well. iPhone's telling me it's time to agitate. I'm watching the clock because I know I need to dump this at 618 and uh, massive dev chart will tell me that too. Okay, time to dump. There goes our developer. Here comes the stop. This is going to stop the development process basically by uh, diluting it to, to nothing, diluting the developer to nothing. Next step is fixing. I'm going to get a piece of paper towel here so I can kind of keep this dry while I'm doing this. The agitation here, I'm not being particularly gentle. It doesn't really matter. I just need to make sure that this water gets around. I'm being pretty messy. As I said, next step is fixing. I should have hit my uh, really should have hit my iPhone to tell it that I was uh, doing my stop bath. This is not rocket science at this point, folks. I'm just getting that road novel to stop acting on my uh, film. So, next step is to put my fixture in. 
I don't measure my fixer uh, as I talked about in another video. Um, the, the fixer has a, a graduate on the side. This graduate has gotten dark on me. So I pretty much do it by eye and ear when I put the fixer in. So my iPhone is now telling me that my stop is done. And I'm going to dump that out. No more development is happening at this point, or, or extremely minor development is happening at this point. I'm going to add my fixer, and that's really going to set up the image. The image is on the film. I don't like to stop and start, even though I just did. I think my negatives will survive. So, I'm going to kind of burp the container as I put this on. Fixer's kind of nasty stuff after it's been used a few times. It's got a lot of silver in it. You should wear rubber gloves, even though I'm not. Um, you should. I don't think many people do. So at this point, I need to start my fixing. And there's an agitation schedule for this too, uh, but I really kind of ignore it. I do the first 30 seconds. I kind of uh, I'm fixing for a total of five minutes, by the way. I'll do it for the first 30 seconds, maybe come back once or twice more, and then a little bit right at the end before I put my fixer back in the bottle. And uh, that's, that's kind of it for fixing. All right, I'm reaching, I'm reaching the end of the fixer stage. So now I'm going to put my fixer back in my fixer bottle. Fixer is reusable for some period of time. There's not tons of agreement on that. I probably use it for longer than I should. Uh, reuse it for longer than I should. Um, just know that you can conserve fixer. You should not pour it down the drain. It's after you've used it for a while, it's loaded with silver. Considered bad for the environment. So you should take it to um, a place that will actually deal with it for you. Um, Keep that in mind. That little bit I will rinse down. Now I need to start washing my film. I do not use any automated washing. I use the Ilford style wash. I've got some, this is tap water at room temperature. I'm going to do three rounds of this washing. I'm going to do 10, then 20, then 40 agitations with fresh water on each round. this out of the way, set up my tap. This doesn't have to be exact. All I'm trying to do is wash my film. This one I'll do 20. Next one I'll do 40. Okay, I'm just finishing up my 40 agitation wash cycle here. And now I'm going to do my final rinse. I don't really need to tap anymore. It's just a habit. I'm going to do my final rinse, which means I'm going to add a little LFN. This is a wetting agent. Cuts down on the uh, surface tension of the water so that you don't get uh, drying marks on your film. Medium format, I'll do one to two drops. That's two drops. Now I'm going to add my distilled water. I like to do my final rinse with distilled. There are no rules. 600 milliliters. Well, this one I agitate fairly lightly. Because I don't want to build up suds. Even though the wetting agent is supposed to be anti-sudsing, uh, no reason to test that. So I'm going to be fairly gentle here. A lot more gentle than I was in washing anyway. Back on. At this point, like I said, I don't really need the paper towel, but so the idea here is to get this elephant mixed around in there and to uh, kind of get all the water mixed in with the elephant in order to make sure we don't have any uh, drying marks. That's good enough. Uh, now I need to get ready with my, pick, my clips and I'll hang the film. I'll empty the water and I'll hang the film.
So it's time to hang the film. We're going to dump it out in the sink. Open it up. Pull the film out. And now I need to take the film off the reel. To do that with this reel, I need to snap it open. Pull the reel apart and now I'm going to grab this part of the film with my fingers and head over to my shower. And now I'm going to hang the film by catching it in the teeth of this hanger. And then I'm going to weight the film down with the heavier uh, hanging clip. So that puts a little tension on the film and more or less make sure it dries fairly straight. Um, depending on the brand of film, you're going to have gobs of curling once you take it off of your clips. And you just deal with that by putting it in negative sleeves and putting it under a book for a few days, that sort of thing. So that's the process for uh, developing film, at least the one that I use. And I'd say that pretty much everybody does it this way unless they use an automated system like a Jabo, Jobo, I'm not sure how you say it, something like that. Uh, this is it. Once that's dry, I can start cutting my negatives. I just unclip the weighted part, cut off five at a time because my negative sheets hold five, and go scan them, put them in the negative sheet, and I'm good. So, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.